start. My name is Anna. I am a senior project manager with Art in Public Places. I've got Ryan Runcy here, who's my co-host. Uh, he's in an upside down world with his video. Hi, sorry about the camera. I'm not quite sure what's going on. So I'll have my video off, but I'm one of the AIPP project managers it's and I'm good. happy to be here. It's good to see your face, Ryan, even though it's upside down. Um, he's our newest <laughs> PM, so please welcome him. He's awesome. He's an artist as well. And uh, he's, you know, he's all the good things. We've also got Marjorie Flanagan here, who is our senior project manager and also acting as our acting program manager, pulling double duty and raising a family. You know, because women can do that kind of thing. And my my Wi-Fi on my computer at work just doesn't randomly went out, so I'm on my phone. Um, so bear with me. Thanks, Marjorie. Uh, I've got the. Uh, I think I've got it pulled up. Am I sharing my screen? No. Let me share my screen again. be smoother at this process. So I'm recording. Great. We've done our introductions. Great. We are here for the second quarter request for qualifications, art in public places opportunities. What we're doing here at Art in Public Places we're, is we're trying to be more regular with our call to artists. So we so you guys can count on three quarter, uh, or, you know, three times a year, uh, you can count on public art calls coming out to you, and they may be local, they may be national, they may be statewide, but at least three times a year, you can bank on that and put that into your schedule. Am I sharing still? So we're going to go over a little bit of Zoom basics. Maybe we can disable the waiting room since we we keep getting people coming in. And am I sharing my screen? It's coming off. I can see it. Okay, great, great, perfect. Uh, got like three things going. Uh, so we've done our introductions. We'll do a little uh, Zoom basics. We've uh, oops. Forgot to do that. We've got two opportunities and we'll recap with that. So, again, um, just uh, keep yourself muted. Uh, put your questions in the chat. Uh, make sure they go to everyone. Uh, let me know if my screen sharing goes off because that could happen. Um, and we'll have our questions and answers at the end. And we might have some uh, COA staff, City of Austin staff here that can chime in about these projects. So first we're going to try and share this cute little video that we had made. Um, Marjorie had it commissioned for us by a local videographer, uh, Fumi, oh, I'm gonna mispronounce that, Orungo, Orungo, Marjorie can correct me. She is Okanro. It is really a lot more accessible to people. Some people can be intimidated by going into uh, a gallery or museum, uh, but if it's out in, in a public space, people can just stumble upon it. It's a selflessness of a public art piece because the name of the artist is kind of in the background. It's really how the piece is engaging with the environment, the community, and offering this experience. I think it's important that everyone be exposed to art, but specifically, for example, uh, neighborhoods or communities that wouldn't have access necessarily to museums. 
Art in Public Places staff works with over 20 departments and hundreds of residents each year to bring art to our shared civic spaces. How are artists selected? Artists are selected by independent juries. Artists are selected to design and install site-specific artworks for the new city buildings or parks or other sorts of facilities through the Art in Public Places Ordinance. Well, working with Art in Public Places has definitely placed me on a platform where I understand what all it takes to install a public art piece. You have to collaborate with community members, whoever the property owner is, so you have to do a lot of community engagement. vibes to it, but I'm okay with that. So the first project we're going to talk about today is the Longhorn Dam Bridge Project. And here's a little background about that project. Um, it is in District 2. It's new construction, and it will be parallel to the existing uh, Longhorn Dam Bridge. Uh, and it was a 2018 uh, bond election, um, uh, or I'm sorry, 2020 active transportation and safety bond measure. So that's where our 2% money comes from. Uh, there are three main sections of this new construction. Um, to the north, we've got the Canterbury Street Parkland Plaza that will be uh, redesigned. We've got the Bridge Plaza area, which is a, a beautiful uh, centerpiece with seating and uh, shade structures handrails, uh, CNC fabricated, uh, it's gonna have uplight poles. And then we've got the south side at Canterbury Street uh, Parkland, and it is going to be a curved retaining wall, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, we've got the Pleasant Valley Bridge underpass, which will be a new underpass um, adjacent to the old underpass, which will be decommissioned. So through our community engagement, uh, we determined that the new Pleasant Valley underpass would be the artwork opportunity area. And you can see the uh, artist's rendering here from the architects. Um, and I can share with you the specs. Uh, you can see the budget for this is $190,000 all inclusive. The new bridge will be, or the new tunnel will be 108 feet long by approximately 30 feet wide um, with a 10 foot high clearance. It will have drainage and ground mounted lighting, as you can see here in the architect's rendering. To our uh, left in the bottom left corner, you can see an image of the existing underpass looking east going into Creek Field parking lot. Um, and Anna, will the artist be tied to that lighting scheme or is it early enough in the process so that they'll be able to work with the designer to, to have the lighting fit their artwork? They will be able to work with the art, with the architect and the construction team for the lighting. That's sort of for placement only lighting to illustrate uh, where the you know, lighting fixtures will be and what that spread could be. And the lighting will be handled and paid for by the, uh, Capital Improvement Project. So thanks for that question, Marjorie. Uh, you can see here we've got new public art goals that are developed uh, with the community through our community engagement meetings earlier this year. Uh, we're looking for an artwork that can be uh, an iconic artwork that identifies the Longhorn Dam area, uh, something that can reflect the natural environment of the lake and the surroundings something that could be visually or physically integrated into a wayfinding element uh, that could help possibly inform and direct pedestrian traffic. As I said, one side goes to Longhorn Dam uh, Shores Park and the other side goes to Craig Field. And then of course our standard is to enrich and that adds uh, depth and breadth to our City of Austin art collection. Uh, you can see here the artwork uh, opportunity is open to Texas-based artists, and we are asking for you to submit a request for qualifications. And in that application, we would like you to answer 
a few of these key questions. And these questions help the selection panel uh, advisors and jurors understand why you would be a good match for this project. So these are short answer uh, in the application. We would like to know uh, what does the jury need to know about your artwork and you as an artist and your public art experience? And what excites you about this project in particular, the Longhorn Dam Wishbone Bridge? Um, and what is your connection to Central East Austin neighborhood? And are you familiar with the history and the surrounding uh, heritage of the neighborhoods? Um, and as an artist, uh, what role has community engagement or social practice played with your work? And if you haven't done that in your art practice, um, why are you interested in doing that? And how could you engage in that with our art in public places contracts? In the design portion, we always have a community engagement phase. So the artist doesn't design in a vacuum. So they're really designing in tandem with the community at large. You can see here on the upper right, we have a three member jury of arts professionals, Augustina Rodriguez, Lise Santa Maria, and Luis Angelou. Uh, these are all three public art professionals. Uh, they are actually all contracted with art in public places for permanent artworks. So they really understand the system and several of them are Tempo or Temporary Public Art uh, Program alums. Well, actually all three of them are. Um, and then you can see they will be assisted by a long list of uh, city advisors. Uh, the Trail Foundation is very involved in this project. Oh, I did that. Please bear with me. Um, and you can see here, we will be assisted by an art and public places panel liaison um, and usually an arts commissioner uh, from the respective districts. So next I'll turn it over to Marjorie Flanagan who will give a little bit of information about the Redbud Trail Bridge and Isle Art and Public Places project. And Marjorie, just tell me when to forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for bearing with our variety of tech issues that always seem to pop up during a public meeting. Um, so I am here to talk about the Redbud Trail Bridge and Isle Art and Public Places project. The, the Redbud Isle is located off Redbud Trail Bridge Road between Lake Austin Boulevard and Stratford Drive. Redbud Isle was formed in the 1900s by the catastrophic collapse of the Great Granite Dam. And that contained Lake McDonald, which is now known as Lake Austin. It actually killed several dozen people. Um, we're also nearby the Tom Miller Dam that forms Lake Austin and it is the primary source for Austin's drinking water. In 1940, LCRA completed the dam as part of the Highland Lake system. It was designed to manage the floodwaters and bring electricity to the Texas Hill Country. There were previous attempts to control the extreme flows of the Colorado, and they all failed. In both 1900 and 1915, the previous dams were devastated by floods, and the granite boulders from those structures can actually be found on Redbud Isle today. Uh, this project, the, the bridge replacement project, has been in the work for years, and it's the result of increasing strain on the bridge due to flooding, population growth, and the number of vehicles on the road with its heightened use. The project is currently in the 60% design phase and completion of the bridge should occur in 2025. The bridge was built in 1948, but it doesn't conform to current roadway standards for traffic volume, bicycle and pedestrian amenities. The bridge is nearing the end of its operational life. The new bridge will handle current traffic requirements and provide enhanced multi multimodal transportation, such as bicycle and pedestrian access. We worked with the Parks Department to determine that the best location for artwork will actually not be on the bridge, but will be on the aisle. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Uh, next slide, please. 
Bonds from 2012 and 2018 were approved towards the creation of the new bridge. The scope of the project includes the new bridge, the shared use path, park accessibility, safety enhancements, and parking lot enhancements. Uh, next slide, please. There are any number of possible artwork locations. I'd like to stress, however, that the final artwork location on this particular project will depend greatly on the selected artist and their proposed artwork siting. One possible location is near the entrance map and kiosk south of the parking lot, as you see here. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, other locations include a central gathering area, again, pending the design of the artwork. This is a dog park, so if the artwork is dog friendly as it's outlined in the goals, this could be a great location. Or at the entrance within the central parking circle, there's a kind of flat grassy area, which you can see on the left. Next slide, please. So community feedback for the goals was collected through an online engagement meeting held in March, and there was an online survey on Speak Up Austin through uh, April 15th. The um, ending goals that were determined include linking together the varied histories, historical stories about the island, including the nearby dam, the flooding, and the current use of the site as a dog park. Uh, the community wants our work designed to create a peaceful, calm, and serene setting for visitors of all ages and species. Uh, and the artwork should integrate with the surrounding rocks, trees, water, foliage, fish, biodiversity, and all the natural, beautiful surroundings. Uh, as always, we like to, the artwork to contribute to the diversity of the City of Austin's artwork collection and have it be accessible physically and conceptually to visitors of all ages and abilities to the park. The artist budget for this project is $625,000. Uh, next slide, please. The eligibility for this call is professional artists or artist teams at least 18 years of age living in Texas. For the select selection process, the open call the call will be open through August 4th, followed by uh, a five-person jury process with paid proposals and interviews. The selection process is standard, which you can see here. Next slide, please. There's some possible jury members here which you can see including Austin artists, Texas artists, and national artists with a permanent piece in our collection. I've also included landscape designers, uh, city staff, and additional subcontractors that will be on the advisory. They will be advisors to the jury. So that is it for Redbud. This recaps what we have talked about. Uh, next slide. So there's a quick timeline on the project. Uh, here we are in June for our artist information meeting. Oh, there we go. Um, this is a little bit off by a month, but we'll be narrowing the pool to a list of finalists. We will invite those finalists to um, a pre-proposal meeting. We'll be, both be meeting with those finalists on site, and then they will create those proposals and and be paid for a proposal and interview phase. Then we'll move into the selection of the, the final artist and we will need to get that recommendation approved by AIPP panel, Arts Commission and City Council. And then we'll move to get them under contract. And yeah, our work, go ahead. That, that's great, Marjorie, thanks. Uh, this schedule is also, uh, the schedule for the Longhorn Shores Dam project, which 
does not have a paid proposal phase. Uh, so we'll follow this schedule. Um, the 100, that's okay. Yeah, the $190,000 contract uh, along with Marjorie's uh, $625,000 contract will have to go before Arts Commit before Austin City Council for approval. So that process takes an additional 10 weeks. Um, and then Marjorie's will also have uh, a paid proposal phase on her project. Um, and we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. It looks like uh, Rama, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but if you wanna come off your mute and ask your question, that would be great. Yes, I just wanna, good morning to everyone. I just wanna find out if you all um, uh, uh, have any plans for augmented reality images uh, with the artwork in the outdoor, uh, you know, art section. Uh, is that a possibility? Because I would be interested in doing it. Uh, but I wasn't sure uh, if there is a possibility. So we can include augmented reality within the scope of the project, but there has to be a permanent piece of, of artwork yes. as yes. well. So the way that the bond funding is, it requires us to spend the dollars on artwork that is permanent and it's defined as 20 plus years. So as long as there's there's um, a permanent physical form and then additionally augmented reality, then I think, yeah, they, they uh, I think we would be open to that for sure. I see, because uh, I can't promise 20 years for the augmented reality because the reality is going to change in 20 years. But, yeah. uh, you, know, you know, I understand that we have to have a permanent installation, mm -hmm. but adding augmented reality, would it, would it help? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. And uh, also the augmented reality can be created after the acceptance of the project. But so when you submit a yeah. project, do you have to include that? Uh, do I have to include that as part of the project before being approved? No, so what you'll be originally submitting will be qualifications. So um, you'll apply with existing works that you've already created. And then if you're selected to the um, short list of artists, then you will create a proposal, which will be paid for. You don't have to create the augmented reality, but you have to in some way convey that to the jury of what you're thinking of doing. I and see. then once you're selected, then you would begin actual work on the artwork and, and whatever is proposed. Okay, and uh, one more thing is I'm not in the permanent pool of your artist for outdoor, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, that particular thing. So do, how do I get into that permanent pool? Uh, is it too late to apply for the permanent pool or how is it? So this, these two opportunities are open to anyone living in Texas, any professional artist living in Texas. You don't need to be in a pool. The um, pool is, is chosen as a selection tool for projects with, that meet certain guidelines, but it's not for this project. This, is, this one's just open. The next time that the pool will be open will probably be closer to 2024. Our current pool is 2021 through 2023. So I would look out in 2024. That's, that's when we plan to open the pool back up. Thank you for answering all of my questions. I appreciate sure. it. Sure, anytime. How about Nathan? I see him up in my little window. Awesome, thank you. Yes, I'm Nathan Goodfellow here with uh, 360production.services. Um, I have some questions about integrating technology into these art projects. I think you may have answered part of that in regards to um, that the technology needs to be able to hold up for 20 years. Um, is there opportunities for um, specifically on the um, trail on on the Redbud, uh, 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 the, the trail pass through, um, integrating with the light technology? Are there opportunities for doing integrated artworks with technology? Um, You're then, asking if there can be artwork on the bridge that's integrated with the lighting or could yep. the, 
yeah. technology integrated with the uh so uh can Not i integrate the technology bridge. with the art with the artwork in any of these projects and if so does it need to be solar or is there power i can tap into you could do artwork on the island that integrates lighting on the island that and there's power out there for sure but not your uh the community has stated that they want the artwork to be on the island not on the bridge and for the longhorn shores project uh the longhorn dam project uh we're staying off the bridge uh specifically because the trail foundation has uh, a bench sponsoring project going on there that's heavily uh, designed by the architects with the shade structure so we're concentrating all of the dollars on the tunnel um, and unfortunately one hundred and ninety thousand dollars isn't what it used to be so we want the artist to concentrate just specifically on the tunnel and yes it can be the lighting and technology can be incorporated into that you have to be very mindful of graffiti or vandalism and, and is that what does the tunnel also have that um, 20 year requirement um, and it sounded also like on that project that the lighting was maybe on a separate budget, um, but maybe there's some technology integration that could be worked into that art design. The uh, lighting is on a separate budget that is their lighting for the tunnel that's part of the CIP project, you, the artist does have the opportunity to work with the architect. Uh, to enhance, uh, help design, advise uh, the lighting that they will pay for. And the artist also has the opportunity to integrate their own electronics uh, into the artwork and tap into the electricity. We can provide a, a J box. Okay, so and, and so it sounds like for both of these, um, there's no need to integrate solar, just to, to clarify that there's pow existing power at both locations. Correct. Perfect. Thank you so much. I really appreciate y'all. Although I wouldn't rule solar out for the island, for the red butt island. Okay. Okay, just, cool. Yeah, just, we've yeah, we've had mixed results. So solar doesn't always last 20 years. Yeah, we that, could, we could I mean keep it open. It, and that brings up another question if I if I am integrating technology into an art installation, let's say I have a Raspberry Pi, I'm expecting it to last 20 years, but it doesn't. Are we going to want to be, can we include a maintenance in this where we can come back and fix things if something does go wrong on it? Because of course, I'm always happy to do that. <laughs> yeah, the contract states that they're under warranty for one year. And then we work out a plan to come to you with certain, certain things. And depending what the design ends up as, we could work those details out. Perfect. I think that answers all my questions. Thank you all so much for your time today. Thank you. We'll turn it over to Candace, who's had her hand up for a while. Hi. Hi, Candace. Hi. Hi. I, this might be a silly question, but I wanted to ask about the, um, the statement that you had made earlier about professional artists. Um, I consider myself to be a professional artist, but what does that look like for, for this uh, scenario? What, what does a professional artist look like? We're looking for an artist who has a body of work uh, and uh, has a, a portfolio of work to show and experience to show. Okay, a strong portfolio that has uh, demonstrated professionalism. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's talk about publicartist.org for a minute, Marjorie. Oh no, let's talk about let's Shonda Hopkins. We have one more question. Let's let's have you speak, and then we'll talk about our uh, application process. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, okay. Wonderful. Um, okay. So this is my first time um, even thinking about doing public art. So I'm not quite sure. Like it says the budget is 190,000, but you said something about that's for the entire bridge. So how much would I, if, if I was chosen, how much would I have to be able to spend on my project that, I mean, cause I have an idea of what I want to do, but I don't know how much of that money I could use. 
Sure. Well, uh, our projects are all inclusive. So the uh, total budget, artwork budget includes your design fee, which is generally 15 to 20%, a small contingency, and then all of your uh, fabrication costs, including insurance, transportation, foundation, engineering, materials, uh, labor, uh, everything, the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, we do work with our artists and we do have budget templates to help them through that process. So you're not alone in this. Yeah. Um, we've done this before. So we are here as staff to help you. Okay, wonderful. I, yeah. And, and, and well, uh, y'all are there to help because I'm like thinking about drilling something into the structure. Is that allowed? Is that how? The I mean, artist will work with their engineer on their proposal and the project teams, uh, okay. including the architect, uh, the landscape architect, the public works project manager, a whole okay, slew so of people, they would... the parks department, everybody gets involved. Okay, good, because um, I would need help with that project. Yeah, and then I we... have a beautiful idea. I'm like, when I saw the bridge, oh my gosh. Okay, so... Yes. So the Longhorn Dam Wishbone Bridge project is actually the tunnel. It's a little misleading. <laughs> yeah, no, the tunnel. That's what I meant when I yeah. saw the tunnel. Um, and the Redbud Trail yes. Bridge is actually on the island. No, no, the tunnel is what I'm talking about. I got a little. Uh, yeah, it's a mistaken. great opportunity. It's an amazing amount of space. Uh, it's um, I, it would be incredible. I okay. would encourage you. you. I would encourage you if you have never done a public art project you might want to check out some of the opportunities that are for temporary artwork or um maybe some of the smaller budget projects because the juries are usually working looking for artists who have worked on but projects with budgets of similar size mm -hmm. um so that they can ensure you know we're expending public funds and so we have to make sure that we're spending those funds in a fiscally responsible way on a professional artist that has uh, demonstrated capability in doing projects of these sizes. Um, AIPP has had a temporary public art program in the past and we're working on revamping it, but I would highly encourage you to look out for temporary opportunities so you can hone your craft and really get some experience getting your feet wet and and what it's like to create a public art project um, there's a lot of ins and outs a lot to learn um, and we are as Anna said definitely here to help uh, but we want to make sure that we're setting up the artists for success and so uh, yeah just keep that in mind thank you and also keep in mind we are bringing you projects uh, three times a year and quite a number of projects. So if this opportunity or if these opportunities don't happen to work out for you, we've got more. Thank you. So, I could just see myself, I could see people enjoying what I have in mind um, and walking under that bridge and then go, that being a spot where people go specifically yeah. to enjoy that breath of fresh air. So that's why I'm like, Okay, but thank you. I will definitely check out um, what y'all said. Thanks for your questions. And Candace, did you have another question? Oh, I was just saying that um, I'm working on projects that are like not at a budget this size. Uh, I sorry, I think I think I kept my hand um, up. I meant to take it off, but it's okay. <laughs> that. But yeah, no, I, I was just saying I was putting in the chat that. I, I'm working on uh, projects that are that are not nearly like uh, a budget this size. So I think that that really helps. Um, I, I, I want to be able to build my portfolio and, and, and work my way up to a budget like this and improve that. But yeah, my portfolio, it's like pretty strong, but I'm just not at that at that point yet. So. And we want that too for you. So that's <laughs> you. why we just, yeah, just to keep everybody um, in the same understanding there's projects of all different sizes and budget opportunities and like yes work your way up and we can help you do that thank for you sure. thank you so much so everyone will put in their application at publicartist.org austin aipp and this is our landing page for their site uh, it is free to apply to our calls it's free to uh, put in a a profile on publicartist.org. 
They are a San Antonio based company and are available Monday through Friday, nine to five for technical support. And you can email them at um, publicartist.org slash info on their homepage. And they are so helpful. But you can see here, we've got our two open calls, which are links to the applications. Uh, you will start your profile. You'll see all of the artwork uh, information here. And then you will have uh, three short or four short answers and then a few uh, demographics questions to answer. And the short answers are those questions that we prompted you with uh, in the information meeting. And then you'll hit submit. Um, and we have the application in English and also in Spanish if you're a non-native speaker. I would encourage you to check out publicartists.org. They have opportunities uh, throughout the country. Some applications are listed on or applied through, through publicartists.org and some are not. And they will tell you that in the applications. But they've got an amazing list of Collated opportunities from around the country. Just an amazing resource. Um, and then I want to leave it open for questions for applying to public artists. If anybody has any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Uh, the, this deadline is August 4th, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, and that's a Thursday. By practice, we open our calls on a Tuesday and we close them on a Thursday. And then on Fridays, we check out the applications and it's like a little bit like the winning the lottery every time we close a call. We see who's gonna throw their hat in the ring. And if we don't have any other questions or if we don't have any other comments from staff. Do we have our, um, do we have a slide with our contact information? Just so if, if further down the line, you guys have questions, we are happy to answer at a later date. Yes, again, our, uh, you can contact us. Um, at our email addresses, which is our name, full name at Austin, Texas, one word, dot gov. So marjorie.flanagan at Austin, Texas, dot gov, or anna.bradley at Austin, Texas, dot gov. Um, again, your deadline is 4 p.m. Thursday, August 4th, 5 p.m. Um, we are excited to see your applications and we're excited to see uh, new artists come into our community. We don't have any other questions. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Yeah, this video will be posted at our website, uh, austintexas.gov backslash AIPP. Uh, there you can also find a link to our YouTube channel, which has a variety of videos about our temporary public art program, each individual project, and then the video you saw earlier with the artists uh, being interviewed. One more thing, our, our usual AIPP newsletter is being phased out and they're going to do an entire departmental newsletter. So if you get the AIPP newsletter, there's, there, there's gonna be, or there was this month, like a little blurb saying, we're transitioning, uh, sign up for our new newsletter. Make sure you sign up because we don't want to lose anyone and we want to make sure that you're all still aware of all the great opportunities that we have coming. So just check that out. Be aware that you need to re-sign up. Yes. yes. And of course, always go to austintexas.gov slash AIPP for yeah. uh, our current open calls, uh, links to our YouTube channel and um, uh, artist resources such as templates, vendors, past projects. We're working on that part. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you so much, everyone, for showing up today. We really appreciate your time.